American Diabetes Association Scientific Sessions, the largest diabetes meeting in the world. I'm Anna Baker here in Philadelphia with Dr. Lee Perot of the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Campus. Dr. Perot is an association-funded researcher. Welcome to Philadelphia. Thank you so much. Congratulations on your research grant. Um, how has this affected your career? Well, it has been everything to me. And in a word, it's been really a springboard for me to go from what I had before, which was an NIH Mentored Career Development Award, to go to the ADA's Unmentored Career Development Award. It has been really the five years that I think I needed to get the experience and confidence to emerge as an independent physician scientist. And again, the ADA award comes with a little bit of money for equipment that a lot of the NIH grants don't have. And so the combination of both the time and the grant support and the equipment money has been absolutely indispensable and truly, I think, will be ultimately my springboard to do great things. Well, we're really glad to hear that. How did you get into diabetes research? Well, I think diabetes, it's really the ultimate puzzle. I mean, you can't talk about insulin secretion without talking about insulin sensitivity. You can't talk about calories in without calories out, about human genetics, microbial genetics, epigenetics, everything is linked together. And you can't pull on one thing without pulling on something else. And so I think it is the ultimate puzzle to figure out. And that is why everybody is here at this meeting trying to figure this out. And I think if you can figure out some small piece of it, you have the opportunity to affect so many people who are afflicted with diabetes. Oh, well, we're glad that you're doing that kind of research. Now, your work is specifically about prediabetes. And tell us a little bit about that, because I think that people would be really interested to know that that is actually the biggest risk factor for type 2. And not only that, but that there's more than one type of prediabetes. Yeah, no, it's an excellent point. You know, I think obesity gets a lot of airtime as being the number one risk factor for diabetes. But people who are simply obese, only the very minority of those people will ever develop type 2 diabetes, as opposed to people who have prediabetes up to 70% of those people will actually develop diabetes in their lifetime. But prediabetes, despite affecting 79 million Americans, it's little known that there's actually different subtypes of prediabetes. So contrary to the prevailing paradigm from years ago, people don't always just get older or by genetics gain weight and walk down a road and then their two hour glucose goes up and then their fasting glucose goes up and they develop diabetes. It turns out that people can either develop pre-diabetes by having their fasting glucose rise or their two hour glucose rise or the two can go together. And what differentiates those things from each other, a high fasting versus a high two hour glucose, the, the physiology is about as different as type one and type two diabetes. Wow. It's remarkable. So what would you say this means for people with or at risk for prediabetes? Well, I think right now our approach to prevention is somewhat generic. I think we tell most people with prediabetes, hey, you're at risk for diabetes. You should eat less and exercise more and try to lose weight. But I think if you look at the underlying physiology behind the subtypes of prediabetes, you can't help but ask yourself, should we be prescribing the same thing to everybody? Or should we try to be developing tailored therapeutic strategies based on the underlying defects? And right now we have no clinical trials that really can tell us. So my research, by virtue of the ADA Career Development Award, is trying to understand some of the basic defects that are specific to isolated impaired fasting glucose with the distinct intent of trying to reverse those as a tailored therapeutic strategy for the prevention of diabetes. Well, again, this is great work. Thank you so much for your time for sharing this with us. Yeah, thank you so much. And thanks to the ADA for my award. I'd really appreciate it. This is Anna Baker reporting from the Scientific Sessions in Philadelphia. Thank you.